Welcome back to Autism Live. We're here with Evelyn Kung and she's answering your questions in real time. Uh, we had somebody who wrote in and said, can I teach my four-year-old nonverbal to play soccer? He's very active and loves to play with his ball, but he gets distracted very easily and loses interest quickly. Okay, so a lot of our kids like balls. Um, and actually related to the last question, Yeah. why do they like balls? Sometimes it's a great cause and effect toy. There you go. I can kick it, punch it, whatever, and it does something. Yes. A lot of our kids love um, balls because for the visual stare out of you yes. involved. They like to watch it go. Yeah. And it's perfect. Yeah. Soccer in itself, I think at that age, yes, you can teach your child to play soccer, to go, um, you know, how to kick it, how to dribble. There's actually some great programs out there at parks for kids with disabilities mm -hmm. where I've, like one of my favorite ones that I do with kids and everybody always laughs and all the soccer coaches think it's so funny, is I just take um, like duct tape or uh -huh. bright colored tape and I put it on their cleats and I just put the color tape there and say this is where you're supposed to kick the ball when you play soccer oh. you know the, ins the right. inside of your foot uh -huh. and this is what you use and it's like it's concrete it's a marker they use it and they just start learning and actually they become pretty good at like kicking and making direct goals the harder part is later on because early on um, it is all the kids are a swarm and they just go right. but as soccer becomes more complicated and this is for all team sports mm -hmm. it relies on social cues yes and that is just really hard for so many of our kids because they can be running down the field but they're supposed to be looking for the person who's open and catch the glimpse of the person right. who's signaling it's a lot. and you know there's just a lot of information coming at once mm -hmm. and it just becomes very difficult to manage that that's to say not to say that they can't do it we've yeah. had kids who do do it, it just becomes very difficult because reading those nonverbal signals is what becomes the, the hard part. But at four, that's at a four, great time to start. It's great. Four, five, six, eight, seven even is pretty good. Like you can keep get them to keep going. Um, it's a great social relationship. It's out there. The kids are just having fun. And there yeah. is a whole ASO league that's just for, yes. uh, that moves at a different pace. Because I know a lot of times, it's very frustrating to me that there are parents who think that four-year-old soccer is, you know, is everything because we're getting my kid ready for a scholarship, so your kid's messing my kid up, and they have that level of intensity, and that Definitely. worries me sometimes. Um, but um, I but think it's score. great to start have young. Fun. Yes. Give him some concrete things, like a little piece of tape on a shoe. I love that. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't you even know? know that. You're supposed to hit it with the side of your foot, not yeah. the, that toe. Not your toe. Did you, know. you do not toe. <laughs> Did not know. Uh, soccer, well, I mean, soccer didn't get really, I'm that old. Soccer didn't get really popular in the States till I was a little bit older. We played field hockey. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the sticks and, and well let that. me tell you something interesting and this happened with one of my kids who actually my teenagers who came in who didn't do well like social cues are just really hard for him and actually they got him into lacrosse oh that's and cool lacrosse thing. you wear a mask ah. so there's fewer social exchanges that are done and he was actually really good because um, and I was telling one of our supervisors who was like captain of his lacrosse team in yeah. like college or something that um, so many of our kids use peripheral vision. Yeah. One of the skills as a lacrosse player is to look one way and hit it the other. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> so you look here and right. you, 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 you hit it that way, oh. you throw it that way. So maybe and our kids would do Our kids are naturals. Wow. So this 12 year old came in and said, he was doing great. Lacrosse is uh, up and coming and he was just excelling with his That's as a teenager. Cool. And when I went to go see him, I was like, that's what makes him good because he was faking everybody out. That's pretty awesome. And, and then so when I was telling my friend who's a lacrosse player, he was like, yeah, that's actually a skill that lacrosse players work for. How sweet is that? <laughs> and, and I have to say, too, you know, there's this whole culture of team. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I, I know from having worked in sales at some points in my life that, you know, when they're looking to put somebody in a sales team, they always are looking for is this somebody who played a team sport mm -hmm. because they just have this understanding of how things work and they're competitive and they'll race against each other but work as a team. It's, it's like a thing to be desired because there's a social element to it, yes. right? 
And, you know, people said to me early on, you got to make sure he does a team sport. He's a boy. You got to make sure he does a team sport. And I really, I was like, I just don't see that. We did a little bit of Little League, but he wasn't as particularly interested. And, and so I did not see it. But I do see now that my son is on his competitive robotics team that the team element and and you know there's places where he has strengths and places where he has weaknesses but i do see the benefit of at some point working on it because it's the collaborative piece but you you know what you caught on to and this is actually what i tell with the kids i work with i say find a sport that is individual based with a lot of repetition which yes. is your kid's skill usually right and they it's some it's things like golf yes um Tennis, yeah, you know they're individual sports: swimming, yes. running, cross country. They're all individual sports, but you work as a team. There you go. So that becomes their social group in high school. Yes, they have a team Absolutely. that they're a part of. They they work competitively. They can come together and know like who can do what sport. You know, yep. what's part of the sport. Um, and they just have an automatic social group and they have teamwork, but it's an individual sport within a team. I love that. And I so many of our that. kids really, really do so well with it and well, all levels too. What a wonderful thing to be looking for when you're looking for, I, you know, I, first of all, you want to prioritize your ABA program at this age, right? But mm -hmm. having those autism enrichment things around the side that help inform, you know, your ABA program and a place for them to try out Definitely. things that they're learning in their ABA program in a safe environment. It's a really, really, and with other kids, I think are a remarkable thing. Hey, thanks for watching Autism Live. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.